All right, so here we go. It's New Year's Eve, and we're going to try to make my first video on how uh, we do these earthquake forecasts. So it's 12:31, 2016, last day of the year, uh, 1:45 in the afternoon Eastern Time. So all you got to do is go on your internet browser and go to earthquakes. USGS dot GOV. Or you can just go to USGS dot GOV. So that's going to take us to the US Geological Survey's website, and this is where you get a tremendous amount of uh, data as far as earthquakes and how uh, to look for the right thing. So you can go to latest earthquakes. It's going to show us everything that happened over a 24 hour period. Now, because it's the U.S. Geological Survey, it defaults right to the United States because that's primarily their area of focus. Um, I use about 15 different sites. Uh, most of them are European sites. Some are in South America. Some of them are in Japan. But generally, this is a good starting point. So we're going to go over here and we're going to zoom out to all the earthquakes in this whole region uh, what we call the, the ring of fire. This is the Pacific Plate. This is the West Pacific and this is the East Pacific obviously. So anyway we're going to zoom down in here into this area here because it's a great place to really learn how things work just because uh, of the last 24 hours worth of events. It'll kind of give you guys a good understanding of how to forecast earthquakes. So the precursor for earthquakes up at the surface that cause damage are large deep earthquakes LDE a large deep earthquake and so here's what a large deep earthquake it's an earthquake that has a magnitude of greater than 4.0 and a depth of more than two or three hundred kilometers so a large deep earthquake is greater than 4.0 and deeper than two or three hundred kilometers. And so if we look over here, it's going to show us the depths, it's going to show us the magnitudes. Anything over 4.0. So that means every single one of these is a large earthquake, but not every one of them is a large deep earthquake, as you can see. So we're going to look at this particular guy right here, and this is Fiji and Tonga right here in the South Pacific. So a large deep earthquake has happened there over the last 24 hours. It's 4.3 in magnitude. It's a 559 kilometers. And that's a significant depth. And the reason why it's important is because that puts it in an area that's called the asthenosphere. And it's just underneath the Earth's crust, under the plate. And the large deep earthquakes that happen just under the plate or at the you know surface of the plate are the ones that produce large shallow earthquakes. A large shallow earthquake, LSE, a large shallow earthquake is the ones that happen up close to the surface. They're the ones that shake buildings and hurt people and break stuff. So those are the, the large shallow earthquakes are the, the, the ones that we really need to keep our eyes out for. A large deep earthquake like this, especially out in the middle of the ocean, not really near anything, uh, isn't going to be felt by anybody. It's not going to cause any any kind of damage on its own The damage comes from the large shallow earthquakes that it produces and And that's where we we have to keep our focus on but you start by looking for large deep earthquakes So this guy right here happened to 559 kilometers again. That's deep More than 4.0 magnitude. That's large deep. So we have a large deep earthquake it happens at 1023 UTC. So let me explain UTC is a universal time zone. Um, that means it's all the way across the globe. It's the same universal time. So for us here in America and Eastern time, that would be about five hours difference. So this happened at about 530 in the morning. These other earthquakes on the map here, if you look at them, they happened earlier prior to that so we're not really even good. we're going to just completely ignore all of these these happened uh, much earlier 
than the uh, the one we're looking at here, the large deep earthquake. They're not large deep earthquakes, so they're not really relevant. So we're going to just kind of ignore these three and act like they're not on the map. So what happens is a large deep earthquake happens out here in Fiji, for instance. This is the area we're focusing on. It's it's uh, different in different areas. And anyway, generally speaking, through looking at all the historical data for years for large deep earthquakes and where they go and where the next earthquakes come after it will give you a general idea of the trajectory of transfer of pressure from a large deep earthquake. The pressure moves up to the surface and then it travels along a fixed trajectory that again collectively through the data over historical archives you can do some math and you can find out that there is a pattern of where the pressure transfers to after a large deep earthquake. And for this particular region, it's two places. It goes to the west and it goes to the south, down here towards New Zealand and over into Indonesia. And you can see about five hours later, this one was five, 5.30 in the morning, and then five hours later around 10 o'clock, you had a similar size or larger earthquake right here at Western Sumatra in the Indonesian Islands. So later, sometime this afternoon or tonight, could sometimes take 24 hours, but generally about 10, 12 hours later, we're looking for an earthquake to happen right here at the Cook Strait along this fracture right here. So we'll come back and we'll take a look at that later and maybe I'll make a video and we can go back over this all again with that new earthquake. So this is the kicker. This is what kicks off the next round of earthquakes for this whole entire area in here is that large deep earthquake. Pressure is going to transfer to the west, which it already did. That gave us this little 4.9, almost a 5 in western Sumatra. And then later we're going to look for one down here in New Zealand and I'll come back and I'll make another video if this one worked out okay.